you want to learn how to attach a domain that you purchase in a different registrar to ADBS infrastructure, then stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas with Brainchust Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack development, please consider subscribing below. In this ADBS Rails tutorial, we're gonna do another subscriber requested tutorial. Across a couple of videos in the ADBS Rails series, I began talking with a user, Sundeep. He was basically asking if he could participate in the ADBS Rails series without having a domain purchased through Route 53. So it's important to note you don't have to buy your domains through Amazon, that just happens to be my preference. So in this case, to demonstrate and answer his question, I purchased a domain through GoDaddy off screen that I'm then going to attach to Route 53 so that we can use it throughout the remainder of the tutorial series as if you had purchased one through Amazon to begin with. Don't worry, we'll get into all the details and I'll show you exactly how to use a domain from a different registrar, it does not have to be GoDaddy, and then attach that to your Amazon infrastructure as if you had purchased it there in the first place. With that out of the way, let's get into the ADBS Rails tutorial. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna use external to refer to the registrar and domain that are outside of Amazon. In my case, that happens to be GoDaddy, but in your case, that could be whatever registrar you prefer. So a bit of setup. Here I have my external registrar open up and I am in the domain section for the domain that I want to use in Amazon. In another tab, I am logged into the AWS Management Console and have specifically navigated to the Route 53 service. The last thing I have open here on a separate window is the actual domain that we're going to be working with. If I go ahead and refresh this, you'll notice in the bottom of the screen that it's just showing the GoDaddy parking page. This is what happens when you buy a domain on GoDaddy and you haven't done anything with it yet. One thing you will note is I'm gonna blur out the domain name as I'm gonna use this for a future tutorial series, so I'm not gonna reveal that just quite yet. To make sure that you don't miss that new tutorial series when it does eventually come out, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and subscribe and then click on the notification bell so you'll see all new videos as they're released. Okay, so we can flip back over to the ADBS console. While we've worked with Route 53 before, we've never attempted to interact with a domain outside of Amazon or outside of Route 53. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and create a hosted zone. A hosted zone in Route 53 is going to take a domain name as a value, and once created, will return some name server records for us. So let's go ahead and click Create Hosted Zone. In the first input in the form, you're going to enter your domain name. Mine's gonna be blurred out. Next, you can scroll down and click Create Hosted Zone. It's important to note that the domain you create your hosted zone for has to exactly match the domain that you have actually registered in your external registrar. As of right now, this won't do anything for our live domain. As you can see, if I refresh, it's still GoDaddy's parking page. So what do we actually do here? By creating a hosted zone, we've effectively just given Amazon the knowledge of this domain. This hosted zone can now be attached to, to other services within Amazon for our usage, but that won't really do much for us right now. As you can see, the domain is still pointing to GoDaddy, thus the GoDaddy parked page. Now that we've got our hosted zone created, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to GoDaddy to tell the domain to point to these newly created hosted zone and name servers. By assigning our domain in GoDaddy to use these name servers, we'll effectively switch from using the default GoDaddy hosted zone to this newly created Amazon hosted zone. With our hosted zone in Amazon, you will be able to attach our domain to various services, even though it will be registered through GoDaddy in our original account or whatever your external registrar is. Here you can see the hosted zone details. If you click that to expand, on the far right side, you can see a list of our four name servers. So we're gonna add these to GoDaddy now. Here we are in GoDaddy's domain panel. While every registrar's platform will be slightly different, each one is gonna provide you with the opportunity to change the DNS settings. Typically this is under DNS or manage DNS. In our case here for GoDaddy, we can just click on DNS 
to have the opportunity to view those records and change them as we need. When this DNS panel loads, you can scroll down to the name servers. Here you can see GoDaddy's default name servers. So we're gonna go ahead and click change. Down at the bottom, you can click enter my own name servers or advanced. We're gonna click the add name server button twice so that we can accommodate the four that Amazon provides us. And then we're gonna click into Amazon and start pasting these from Route 53 onto our domain. Once you've added all the name servers, you can go ahead and click save. After we click save, GoDaddy gives us one last warning. They are warning us of the risks of changing our NS records. And rightfully so. If this were pointing to a live domain instead of a parked one, and we weren't ready in Amazon to accommodate that change, this domain would be down until we went into Amazon to make the appropriate changes. In our case, there is no real risk here since it's just a parked domain. Um, but you do want to take this into consideration if you're migrating a live domain you'd want to make sure that you have everything ready to go on the Amazon side to ensure minimal downtime. So we're gonna go ahead and click yes, and then click continue. As you can see, the interface updated to say that uh, they cannot display our DNS information as they don't manage the name servers. Although it still displays the old GoDaddy name servers below, I suspect that's just cached. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. And there we go, you can see our new Amazon name servers that we pulled from our Amazon hosted zone. If we flip back over to the live website and refresh, you may have to wait for a little while to see this change propagate, or you can flush your system's DNS cache as well as emptying your browser cache. I'll paste the command to flush your DNS cache if you're using a Mac. Once you've successfully flushed DNS cache and emptied your browser cache, you can see reloading the page just yields a broken site. While that doesn't feel like progress, it actually is. Amazon doesn't display a park page by default like GoDaddy does. We are now using Amazon's name servers. To prove this connection, I'll go ahead and create a new record in this hosted zone to point the domain to an S3 static hosted website that I uploaded off camera. If you wanna learn how to create an S3 static hosted site, from an S3 bucket, you can follow the tutorial that I'll link in the card as well as the description below. For now, we're going to go ahead and click create record. We're gonna move forward with simple routing and we're gonna go ahead and define a simple record. We're gonna leave the record type as a record and then go ahead and choose the endpoint. Scrolling down the list, you can see S3 website endpoint, choose our region, which is in my case, US East one, as well as our bucket. Note per that S3 bucket tutorial, that the S3 bucket you make must be identically named to your domain name. Once you've got all this complete, you can define the simple record and then click create record. Once again, we can flip over to the website, load it in another browser. Here we'll have to wait a bit and probably also have to clear our browser and DNS cache. Flushing DNS cache is a long command that I don't typically memorize. While I will have it pasted in the description, I tend to typically just add this as a ZSH alias. I just want to interrupt for one second and see if you're finding value. Please subscribe below, hit the like button, turn on the bell notification for, for future notifications of, of content like this. And if you are, we have a limited time offer. Our coworker here, Bear, will perform one trick per subscriber. Yes, down. Yes, roll over. Good boy, you're the goodest boy. Good boy, down. down. Oh my gosh, we're going viral, Bear. Now if we reload our page, you can see we are pointing to our S3 bucket. As you can see, this page is confidential. All the information has been redacted. So you're gonna have to go ahead and subscribe for a future series where we're going to utilize this hidden domain name and build it out. At that point, once we release that series, we'll reveal the domain name, uh, the project, and kind of why I wanted to keep it under wraps until it was complete. As always, I hope you found this helpful. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If you'd be willing to share this with any of your friends who you think may be interested in this type of content, I would really appreciate it. And as always, I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial.